Here in the book of Matthew 1 verse 23, we read, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, you know, there are so many things happening in the times that we are living. Scary things. The Bible speaks about the end times as very, very uh, unstable times. The Bible speaks of the end times as very frightening, terrifying times that we are living in. And as we are moving into the end times, it's becoming more and more terrifying. What is happening in the world today is that the whole world is like a roaring ocean. It's terrifying what is happening. And it's increasing. And this will increase until Jesus comes back because it's like the birth banks of a woman that's in labor. But as children of God, the Bible teaches us not to fear. Can you say amen? God says in His Word many times, do not fear. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear is not from God. A spirit of fear is from the devil. It is opposite to faith. So we need always to protect our heart from the spirit of fear. And we need to fill our hearts with faith. Can you say amen? amen. Faith. Because faith will, will strengthen us. Faith will help us to uh, overcome the world and the things of the world. So this morning, I want to speak to you about not looking at the things that is happening in the world. Not focusing on that, but focusing on the God who is with us. Getting your eyes fixed upon Jesus. Won't you say to somebody, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Right? Because Jesus overcame. He is, our, he is our pioneer in faith. He is the front runner in our faith. So we need to look at Him. Because the way Jesus overcame, that is the same way that we will overcome. And we are going to overcome everything of the world. Can you say amen? Because Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. In this world, you have persecution. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Jesus has already defeated the world. And, and in that same power of victory, we are also going to overcome the things of this world. Amen. So, I know in, even in our nation, there are a lot of turbulences, a lot of uncertainty, political uncertainty, and all these kinds of things. But as children of God, we are in the kingdom of God. We are not in the kingdom of this world. And even though the kingdoms of, the, of this world, those kingdoms are shaken now, our kingdom cannot be shaken. Can you say amen here this morning? Our kingdom is a solid kingdom. We belong to the God whose name is Emmanuel. God with us. Why shall we fear then? If the Bible says God is with us, why shall we fear then? You need to ask you this question. And I want you to think about this this morning. I'm thinking on this. When the Bible says God with us, what does it mean to me? What does it mean to me? Isaiah said something. He said here in the book of Isaiah 41 verse 10, he says, Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will, number one, strengthen you. Say strengthen. So this God that is with us, Emmanuel that is in us, is saying to us, I will strengthen you. Number two, I will help you. And number three, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Some translation says, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. So this God, God is with us. Number one, He's saying, I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. 
Sometimes in our lives as Christians, and, and much more when we are leaders, much more. Who knows that the highest trees uh, catches them because the, the strongest winds. And even if we are, you know, even if, if we are believers, we are against principalities and powers. And sometimes we get to that place where we feel very drained. We feel depleted. We feel low on our spiritual energy. It's like we have no spiritual energy. We feel like empty, like a car running on empty. Why? Because we are giving out. We are giving out. There's like a river flowing out of us. A river flowing out of us all the time. And we are in this spiritual battle. We need to walk by faith. We need to walk by love. We need to walk by patience. We need to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is all taking out of us. Energy flowing out of us. And I don't know about you, but I know that um, you get to times when you feel that your spiritual strength You've, you've, you get it to that place where you feel weak spiritually. You feel like you need to be strengthened. And this is what God is saying. I will strengthen you. We can see in the life of uh, the prophet Elijah. Now, we all know the story of Elijah. He's one of my favorite prophets. If you haven't noticed that, you know this this morning. He's one of my favorite prophets, Elijah. Elijah had a tremendous victory. He gained a tremendous victory at the, on the top of Mount Carmel where the fire of God fell. And what happened, all these Baal prophets were, that deceived Israel, they were slain. And Elijah, he was believing God for revival. He was trusting God for God's people to come back to God, to break away from the idolatry, and to recognize God of Israel as the only God and worship Him alone. But Israel did not respond in the way he expected, and he became very disappointed. Who knows that disappointment can rob us from our spiritual power? Disappointment. Sometimes we expect something to happen, and then it never happens. And we feel disappointed. Disappointed. You know, uh, I like the English because the English, uh, the English words explain so beautiful. Like disappoint means like you missed your appointment. Okay, you missed your appointment. And if it was a good appointment that you expected, you are going to be disappointed because you missed that good appointment. So this is what happened to Elijah, and it happens to all of us as leaders. I've had many disappointments in the 25 years I've ministered here in uh, MCC. I've had many disappointments because I'm always expecting God to do something supernatural. Amen. And God has done very supernatural things through the years. And I'm expecting revival. Who knows I'm expecting revival? Not just here. I'm expecting revival in South Africa. I'm expecting that God is going to pour out His Spirit in South Africa, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are going to get saved, even millions of people. I expect God to pour out His Spirit all over the world, and millions of people, nations, are going to come to the Lord Jesus. Through faith, I'm expecting God to move mightily because I know if God does not move, nothing's going to happen. It is God with us. Now, sometimes we get there, especially leaders, but, you know, we all get there, not only leaders. Elijah was very disappointed. And when uh, he got a message that... Uh, the queen wants his head, he became even more discouraged, and he, went, he ran away. He ran into the desert, and he went and slept under a broom tree. Is that the right word? Juniper. Juniper tree. He went to sleep under the juniper tree. He was so exhausted, he was spiritually, not physically really, but spiritually. But have you noticed, if you are spiritually exhausted, even your physical body suffers. It's like you feel tired in your body. When you're spiritually at a low, it feels like your body hasn't got any energy. That's where Elijah was. He was lying there, and then, this is what I want to see you, I want you to see this this morning. 
He says, I'm with you always. I'm with you always. Maybe Elijah felt like a failure. Maybe in his calling, he felt like a failure. He felt like he failed to turn the heart of Israel back to God. He was there, and the Lord came to him. All of a sudden, an angel was there. An angel touched him, touched him, and said to him, Elijah, eat, rise up and eat. And when he looked up, there was like a cake, bread cake. Angel baked him a cake, and there was water. It was like bread cake. And who knows, this was not just normal bread. It was not just, it was prepared by an angel. It was the bread of life. It is the God with us, the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Praise God. I am the bread of life. I will strengthen you. So Elijah took some bread. He ate the bread. And then he fell asleep again. And after a while, the angel came back. And the Bible says the angel touched him again for a second time. He touched him. Who knows? If an angel touches you, something happens in your spirit. Something happens in your spirit. The angel touched him again. And he revived. His spirit got revived. And he took the bread, ate the bread, and uh, drink, drank some of the water. And then he began to walk to Mount Horeb. And the Bible says, for 40 days and for 40 nights, he walked through the desert and he climbed Mount Horeb. Praise God. Wasn't that supernatural strengthening by the Spirit of God? You see, when God touches you in your spirit, He supernaturally strengthens you by His Holy Spirit. It's only God that can strengthen us in our spirit in such a way that we can supernaturally walk through a desert for 40 days without having another drink or having another piece of bread to eat. This is God. See, when God strengthens you, He strengthens you in your inner man. Who knows you've got an inner man or your spirit? You call it your spirit. You've got the outer man and your inner man. The outer man is what everybody sees, but there is an inner man, the hidden man of the heart. God strengthens you in your inner man. He strengthens your spirit. He, he, what He does, He imparts power into your spirit. He releases power into your spirit. He supercharges your spirit. And when that happens, it's like an angel touched you, like what happened to Elijah. And I was thinking about this. Later, when uh, Elisha received the mantle, he asked a double portion. And Elijah could give him a double portion. Because he was touched twice by an angel. Who of you have been touched by an angel before? Well, you don't know, but maybe you have been touched by an angel. Who has been touched by the power of God? All of us, amen? The power of God touches you. There's nothing that can compare to that, being touched by the power of God. And sometimes, you know, we can pray and pray and pray. I pray a lot. You pray a lot. But sometimes when you pray a lot, especially in the Spirit, you pour out. You pour out. You pour it. If, I pray, if I've prayed a couple of hours, I've poured out. I've poured out. I've poured out my spirit for the congregation. I've poured out my spirit. Then I'm empty. I need to be strengthened by God. I need to receive fresh bread from the Word of God. I need to be sustained by the Word of God. By the Word of God. Can you say amen? It's the Word of God. And the Spirit of God needs to come and minister to me. The Spirit of God needs to come and strengthen my spirit once more. Otherwise, I'll stay empty. We need to refuel. Say to somebody next to you, you need to refuel. You can't run on empty. You're not going to get far. The angel said to him, you need to eat because you're not going to complete your journey if you don't eat. Those the spiritual food. The same with you and me. We need to be strengthened by God. And God said here, He promised through the Isaiah, I am your God. I will strengthen you, number one. That's what he said. He will strengthen your faith. You'll find out when God strengthens your spirit, your faith rises. Because faith flows out of your spirit, you'll find out that your love is strengthened. Your courage is strengthened. The anointing, the flow of the anointing upon your life is strengthened. All of a sudden, there's a stronger anointing flowing upon your life because God strengthened you in your spirit. 
Who knows that Jesus is the anointed one? Christ the anointed one. And when he comes and he strengthens you, he wraps off on you. When he comes in your spirit, he wraps off on you. And when he wraps off on you, you are anointed. You receive the anointing. The double portion anointing flows in your life because he, he strengthened you and that anointing is strengthened in your life. Your hope is strengthened. All of a sudden, you know, the clouds don't look so dark anymore. The difficulties don't look so difficult anymore. All of a sudden, you get hope. You get courage. You are strengthened. Who knows what I'm talking about? Are we speaking about the same God? God with us. Come on, let's give Him a praise offering here. It is God who strengthens us. It is He who strengthens you. This is what Paul said here in Philippians 4 verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ. We had this previous week, we, the pastors had our breakaway week. We, every year we have a breakaway week. We go and we plan for next year. We fellowship together. We do some things together, build relationships and so on. And the last day, we went to, a, to watch a show, a show of uh, birds of prey, like eagles and falcons and so on, right where we were. And uh, it was so beautiful to see this because uh, they were wild, uh, these kites, wild birds called kites, and they were falcons, and they were, they were, there was a fish eagle, there was the, that uh, black eagle, was the huge eagles. So they would bring these birds out, and then the guy told us, he said, it's high up in the mountains, and he will release the eagle, and they'll say, well, watch what this eagle does now. He's going to fly now. And he's going to look for a thermal. He's going to fly around, search for a thermal. And the moment he hits a thermal, as long as he hasn't got a thermal, he's got to flap his wings. And he gets tired, tired. As he flaps his wings, he gets tired, more tired, more tired. So he needs to get a thermal. And the moment he gets a thermal, he get, goes into that. A thermal is like hot air, hot air going up, taking up. It's like a wind, hot wind picking him up. The moment he hits that thermal, you can see, he turns, and he goes into that thermal. And, there, and then, once he goes into that thermal, there's no more flapping. He just goes, and he goes, and he goes. And that thermal takes him up higher, and higher, and higher, and higher, up to about 2,000 feet. It will take him up. And once he's up there at 2,000 feet, this guy would go, and he would take, he's got a, like a, like a uh, glove, a le leather glove. And it'll just go like this. Now, that eagle is far away. He's far out. He's like up there. And it will just go like this. And that eagle, when he sees that, it means, it means that he can come and get his food. He comes in from that height. He comes in. He dives down. He just folds his wings back. And he dives down. And he comes in. He comes and takes the food. It's so beautiful to see this. But there are so many lessons to learn from that. What I learned, learned there was one, the fish eagle. The fish eagle couldn't. Fish eagle was lazy. He was, she was looking. It was a, a, a yeah, female bird. <laughs> okay. And he said that uh, she had too much food or something. So she was like some Christians, just lazy, you know, just sitting there. Don't want to fly. Don't want to get up high. Well, don't want to go and look. Because there were thermals. There were wind. There was wind. But uh, she was just lazy. She just fly, you know, just went out, took a, you know, just a circle and just come back and sit on the roof again. And they wanted to show us the show, you know. But this eagle didn't want to play along. So eventually, you know, she, what they did is they just put some meat in the, like in a pond there. And then she came. She grabbed the meat out of the pond. The guys took some photographs and so on. But what I saw there is that, the, like, like the first uh, bird that went up, that bird was like small, very light. I think it weighed 300 grams or something. And for that wind to, to go up, it was easy. Find a thermal and go up easy. But you see, without that thermal, that wind, it's effort. You have to clap, flap your wings. Now God says, I will strengthen you. 
in your inner man. And you will, you will mount up with wings of eagles. Praise God. I will strengthen you. And you'll go up higher and higher. God strengthens us. Number two, I will help you. Say, I will help you. God says, I won't just strengthen you in your inner man. I will also help you. Who knows we need help from time to time. We need help. And sometimes we feel very alone. In difficult times, when you are in trouble, I know in, our, in this house, we've got cells. We're like a family. We stand together. We pray for each other. We've, we, we, we're like a group of buffaloes, you know. If somebody in this house is attacked by the enemy, we're all there. We're all fighting together. If somebody's in hospital, we're all there. Sometimes I say, listen, too many people coming. You know, don't, go, don't come anymore. But, uh, you know, it's not, it's not like that everywhere. And sometimes people are all alone. Christians are all alone. There's no support. But God says, I am with you. I am with you. I will help you. You are not alone. And God will use the most unlikely people to come to your rescue. Like in the case of Elijah, before the drought was broken, he was fed by the crows, the ravens. Is that the right word? He was fed by the ravens at the brook. And eventually, there was, no, there was no food. Not even the ravens could find food. And then God said to him, now you go to a widower in Sarfat. She's going to provide for you. Now look at God. Look at the situation. God doesn't send him to a millionaire widower. He sends him to a poor widower who is about ready to prepare the last meal for her and her son. She had their little bit of was it flour and, uh, and oil? That's all she had left. So God sent him there. Because God is your helper, He will help you. And He will help you through the most unlikely peoples. God will use people that, you know, you'll never thought that will come and help you in the time of need. God has got many people. Can you say amen? He's got people all over. One time, the Apostle Paul, his life was in danger. And he had to get awake very quickly. And God said to him that night, the Lord appeared to him in a vision and said, Don't fear, Paul. I've got many people in this city. Praise God! I've got many people in this city. So what they did, they lowered him down through a, in a basket. And he got away. He escaped death. Why? Because God, the God who is with us, helped him. God helps us through people. He can get these people together to help us. Can you say amen? I can tell you stories about this. God will use, He will instruct even unbelievers to help you. Don't you think God will not use unbelievers? He will use the most unlikely people to come to your rescue. This is who God is. And there, what happened, Elijah, when he got there, and the lady said to him, when he asked her for something to eat, she said, all I've got is a little flour and oil, and I'm going to make it for me and my boy now, and then we're going to die. And he said, no, okay, you carry on doing that. But first, but first, make me a bread. Make me some. God tested her faith as well. She had to sow something into the kingdom. She had to trust God. And what happened there? Uncommon favor was released. Uncommon favor. You see, when God helps you, he will, he will release uncommon favor. Say uncommon favor upon your life. You will be so surprised because you will know it is God helping you. It's uncommon favor. Even people, you know, that you thought didn't like you that much, they will even help you. But why? Because it's uncommon favor. It's God's uncommon favor. You see, God with us means uncommon favor. It means not only He will strengthen you, but He will help you with uncommon favor. Like what happened with Joseph when he was in jail. God gave him uncommon favor. And the chief of the jail made Joseph a very important person in the jail. He got a managerial job in the jail. Praise God. Uncommon favor. This is what happened to Elijah. He received uncommon favor there when the widower made him a, a piece of 
bread to eat. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are released. What happened is when she obeyed and she made him a bread, cake, the word of God came to him. The gifts of the Spirit was activated. Now listen to this. This is how God helps us. Even in the most difficult circumstances, just like that, God activated the, the gift of miracles. And he said to her, now what you do now, you take this flour and this oil, and you are going to feed yourself, and you are going to feed your son, until the rain comes, it's not going to stop. Praise God. God released a miracle in a house. Why? Because God is a generous God. Because he helped the servant of God, God helped her and a boy. In a wonderful, powerful way. I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. God will help. When you are, sometimes when you are in desperate need of help, God surprises you. By the gifts of the Spirit. He activates the gift. He's inside of you. Do you know that? God is inside. Say to somebody, He's inside of you. He lives inside of you. If you are born again, God lives inside of you. Mm. He's very near. He's very close to you. Doesn't matter where you go. If you're right down deep, down in the mine. Who has ever been down in the mine? Has anybody been down in the mine? Some people here. Well, I've also been down in the mine with some church members. You know, they take me everywhere. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you, dangerous people. They took me down t two kilometers down in the mine. But even if you are down there t two kilometers down, I am with you. Even if you go down in a submarine, you can go down five kilometers. He says, I am there with you. Even if you're high up in the space shuttle, he's still there with you. You cannot get away from him because God lives inside of you. God with us. God with us. God with us. He's always near. He's always close. You can never get stuck. You can just ask him. For a solution. He's so close. It's like that. He gives you a brilliant idea. Hey, Richard, just like that. Brilliant idea. Let's see. Freddy, just like that. God gives you a brilliant idea. Why? He's so close. I will help you. Why am I teaching or preaching on this? I want you to put your focus on God. I want you to, to know. Depend on Him. Don't depend... On yourself depend on God depend on, on his strength depend upon his help amen the gifts are released supernatural provision is released when God helps you here in Hebrews 13 it says so he may boldly say the Lord is my helper I will not fear I will not fear do not fear do not fear do not fear do not fear how many times do I, do I need to say that? Do not fear. Because fear is a spiritual force that will, sh will try and steal uh, our faith from us. Do not fear. Reject fear and say, and confess your faith. Say, no, I'm not going to fear because God is with me. I'm not going to fear because God strengthens me. I'm not going to fear because God is my helper. I trust in Him. He's going to come through for me. He's not going to drop me. You know that God will never drop you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even the day when your body dies. Not you, when your body dies. Because you, if you are born again, you are never going to die. Never going to die. Your body is going to die. But you are going to live on forever. God's going to give you a new body anyway. But even the day. When your body dies, God says, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to lead you through the shadow of the valley of death. Do not fear. Okay, the last one. He says, I will uphold you. I will 
uphold you. Now, for me, that means supernatural protection. God says, I'll not only strengthen you, I'll not only help you, but I will give you supernatural protection. When the enemy comes against you, when he plots to take your life, or when he plots to destroy you, I will protect you from the devil. I will protect you from all your enemies. I am your shield. I'm your protection. God said to Abram, Abram, I am your shield. Wow. So God is saying to you, what he said to Abraham, he's saying to you this morning, do not fear the enemy, do not fear the devil, because I am your shield. I'm protecting you. In the early church, the church was so powerful. The church of Acts was so powerful church, filled with the Holy Spirit. Supernatural miracles happening. Healings taking place. Thousands upon thousands of people getting saved every day. It was like in Jerusalem. It was like every day. It was just like this church was growing. And uh, the religious people didn't like that. The Jews didn't like that. The religious Jews didn't like that. And Herod thought, well, and the, he, was, he was inspired by the devil. He was the King Herod. So he thought, well, what is going to do to, uh, you know, to, to do a favor for the Jews? He will kill James. So he killed James. He had him like beheaded. And he saw that the Jews were very happy about that. So he thought, well, okay, but what I'm going to do now, I'm also going to kill Peter. Going to kill Peter. You know, Peter was like the rock that the church was built on. So he got Peter captured, put him in jail. He was handcuffed between uh, some of the guards. He had to sleep in jail. The next day he was going to be killed. But the church of Acts said, no ways, that's not going to happen. We are going to call upon the God who is with us. And they began to pray the whole night, prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. And while they were praying, the God who said, I will uphold you with my right victorious arm. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand intervened because in the middle of the night all of a sudden peter peter was sleeping obviously he was not afraid he was not scared because he was he knew the promises of god he knew what god said would happen and the angel came in and the angel touched him and as he, the angel touched him all these uh, handcuffs and chains and things fell off and the gates of the jail went open and he took him by the hand. He took him out of jail. And he took him home. He said, right, you go home now. You're free. Wow. Supernatural protection. Supernatural deliverance. God is with us. Can you say amen? This is the God that we serve. It's God who says, I'm with you. Nothing can stop your God from rescuing you. Nothing can stop your God from protecting you. Next moment when the church looked, here was Peter. Was rescued. They couldn't even believe it. They said, it's his angel. They thought so. Peter said, no, it's me. God said, an angel. Herod, that wanted to destroy the church, he got eaten by worms. God sent an angel to deliver Peter, but he sent worms to eat Herod. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. You see, God will send. He will judge the enemies of his church. He will judge your enemies. Praise God. So instead of Peter dying, Herod died. And the church grew stronger and stronger and stronger. Why? Because God is with us. And nobody can stop the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is with us. Praise God. Afterwards you will think, how did I survive those demonic attacks? I'm telling you, God with you. Afterwards, you know, you think, why were you not destroyed? Or... Why didn't uh, your life fall apart? Because in the natural, in the natural, your life should have fallen apart. In the natural, you should have been destroyed. Why were you not destroyed? Because God protected you. He upheld you with His victorious right hand. This is the God that we serve. He says here, let's stand. And I want you to pray this with me now. This warfare prayer. And if you... 
I want to encourage you to go and memorize this prayer. You can do it in Afrikaans or English. And pray it. I pray this prayer over my life because I know we are always under demonic attacks. And the Bible teaches us that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He's like the prosecutor in a court. He will gather, he will gather like, uh, what do you say? He will make up a case against us. He'll gather evidence against us. And then he will take you to the high court in heaven and he will go and accuse us there. Why? Because he wants us to come under judgment. He wants us to, to hurt our lives. But the Bible says here, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. But you need to know your position in Christ. You need to know your privilege in Christ. You need to know your heritage in Christ. Because when the devil comes against you, and when he accuses you in the, in the, in the high court of heaven, you need to know your position in Christ, because you will denounce him. You will, what is the word? You will condemn it. Praise God. So I want you to pray now with me. Say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And our righteousness is from God, says the Lord. Give Him a praise offering. Give Him a praise offering. God is with us. Won't you say that? God is with me. Say, God is with me. He will strengthen me. Yes, He will strengthen me. He will help me. He will uplift me with His victorious right hand. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 